going on uh, as I got a little older, you know. As a matter of fact, let me go back to this right here. You remember when I told you on the first one about, about me being molested? Yes. Okay, uh, well, it was a cousin, and, and he, he was an adopted cousin because my aunt thought that she couldn't have any kids. Her and my uncle had been trying to uh, have kids, and, and to no success, you know, they didn't have any. But uh, after they adopted my cousin, I won't call his name, but he's, he's, he's gone now. But I won't call his name because I don't want my other cousins to be you know, offended by me putting them, you know, mm -hmm. in it. But anyway, um, at, at an early age, eight, I said ten, nine or ten. Yeah. It was a we was having a Halloween party, and uh, my cousin told me to come on go upstairs with him. He had a big bag of trick or treat candy, right? So uh, you know, my me being a kid, you know, we love candy and stuff like that. So I followed him upstairs and, and to get the candy and everything, and he led me into the room. And when he led me into the room, I asked him, I said, where the, where the candy at? He said, well, I got the candy. He said, hold on, I'm going to give it to you. So he started undoing his pants, right? So I'm looking at him like. So he told me, well, go get on the, lay on the bed right there, and I'm going to um, bring the candy back in to you. So when he came back into the room, he, he had his pants down. And his penis was out and everything, and and I'm looking at this joker like, man, what in the world is he doing? And so he held me down and jumped on the bed. And when he jumped on the bed, he pulled my pants down, and he got ready to insert himself or try to insert himself in me. And that's when my aunt came upstairs. And when my aunt ran upstairs, she caught him and called him. And he acted like nothing was wrong. And he was getting ready to molest me. He didn't do it because my aunt caught him in just the nick of time. Now, you know, as being a child, man, you naive. You don't really know what's going on. You don't know nothing about no, no sex stuff like that. You don't know nothing about that stuff, man. And he was getting ready to molest me and everything. But my aunt caught him. Thank God she did catch him. You know, because you never know what, what life would have been after he had molested me and everything. But it, it did hurt me. You know, it... it it must it, have been traumatized. It, I was. I was. That's the word I was looking for. I was traumatized and everything, man. My cousin and I loved all my cousins dearly, you know. And um, cause they were they were guys and everything, you know. About me not having no brothers, yeah. you know. They were my brothers, you know. They were my, my first cousins. Yeah. You know. And um, did he get in any kind of trouble? Did she? I, you know, really, I don't know because she made me put. But she, she, she wanted me to, to swear to her that I wouldn't tell nobody. And at that point, I, I didn't tell anybody. I may, maybe in a year or two years later that I told my dad. Mm -hmm. Because if I had told my dad that particular night, it would have been history. It would have been history for him. My dad, I know my dad would have killed him by me being his only son and another man tried to hurt his son. Mm -hmm. Man, I know my dad would have killed him, man. But um, and I love my aunt and I, I, I didn't, didn't say anything at that point in time because I didn't want him to get in any trouble and I didn't want my aunt you know, and my father, yeah, to you know, that's amazing how tech people, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and, and by me loving my aunt so much, I, I, I and then she asked me to do anything, I, I, you know, and especially by me swearing to her and, and, and promising her I wouldn't tell nobody, you know, I didn't at that point in time, I didn't. But as it started going through my head and everything, you know, and it started touching me a little yeah. bit, I, I told my dad. And when I told my dad, boy, man, my dad hit the ceiling. But by this time, my cousin had done went on, went on into service or, or went somewhere. As I don't know, I, but I think he either went to the service or either he got locked up because my aunt and him never told us where he was at at that point in time. He was gone for like four or five years. Okay. But he told everybody that he was in service. He was in the service. But we know now to this day that he was locked up, and it probably was behind the same thing because I know that he had molested one of his sisters. Wow. He had molested one of his sisters. But like I said, he was adopted. He wasn't a real, I see. a, a real uh, blood relative. It's possible he went through some stuff maybe she didn't even know about. I, I, think, I think that because, you know, they always say, you know, uh, when you're molested, you, it, it, it falls 
a cycle. It's a cycle. And, and you lead on, you doing it to somebody else. And I think that's what happened, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it, it didn't ha it, he didn't molest me, but he was about to. And I, I'm, I'm more than sure if he had, I probably would have been a, a predator or something like you that. You might not you know? even be here right now. Right, I probably would I probably would be in, been in the penitentiary or somewhere. But, uh, you know, none of that never hopped off in my life. I never molested any of my family members or uh, nothing like that, you know. Uh, but, but, but life was, was, was hard, but I, I managed to survive. But uh, I'm gonna move on up a little bit and, uh, and, and, and go from, from 11. Like what was like your teenage years like? And also like what was like the streets like as a teenager? Okay, um, yeah, that, that's, 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 that's a good question. Um, as a teenager, um, I did pretty good. I played, I played football. I played for John Marshall. Uh, I played, I played recreation ball. I played for Battery Park. Matter of fact, when I played for Battery Park, Mr. Beard was the coach, and we won three championships behind behind this guy right here. Man, he was a hell of a coach. He was a great father figure, you know. God rest his soul. He's gone also, but he was a great father figure, and he taught me a lot of things that that young men should should have known, and that young men should have presented themselves, you know. And that was something my dad should have been doing, you know. But my dad wanted to run the streets and everything. But Mr. Beard was a great man, man. He taught me everything that a, that a, that a young, growing up man should know how to treat a woman, you know, how to be polite to, to people, yeah. and, and how to treat elderly people. My mom also taught me that, you know, when you see an old person sitting on the porch, uh, or you see an old person walking across the street, you always say good evening, good morning, how you doing? Would you like some help? And then that was something that, that I instilled in my son, you know, be polite to people, treat people well, because you never know when you're gonna need somebody. You yeah. know, somebody may be running behind you and you happen to run up on Miss Jones' porch or, or Mr. Johnson's porch and, and they help you out, you know. So you always treat people with respect. And that was something I did. I treated people with respect. You know, I, I, I love life, you know, I, I, you know, I'm 60 years old now. God, God bless me to be 60. A lot of my friends are over in the cemetery right now. Yeah. But um, I got into fights, elementary and middle school. Like I said, I, I won some and I lost some. But uh, I wasn't a violent type person. I, you know, I wasn't yeah. a violent person. Just little scuffles. Just, just little scuffles and and, and little mis disagreements and whatnot. You know how kids and make little bets and whatnot. You know. I assume when you was coming up, guns won't won't a, a big thing back then. No, like how they are now. No, 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 no. Guns wanted to play back then. Guns wanted to play. It was your fist, and it was maybe the, the worst could happen is you got double banked or you got stabbed. That was the worst thing that could have happened. It wasn't a bunch of shootings and all of that back in my time, man. Matter of fact, you could you could sleep with your doors open and everything, and man. and people wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't bother with you and everything. But now, sleep with your door open, you wake up, everything in your house gone, or either you dead one, you man. know. But um, that's crazy. I hear stories about that, but I ain't you know I ain't never lived in that where I felt too comfortable. Right, right. Well, yeah. I mean because. I don't. I, I guess it's because they took the male. They took the male figure out of out of uh, kids' life, and I, I'm saying that if, if a lot of men or a lot of young guys would step up to the plate right now and and teach their their kids how to be respectful to others, the gunplay wouldn't be out here because a lot of things that the kids fight about now, they don't even know what they're fighting about. But then they mess around and, and you'll see a kid dead laying over there. And life is, is not worth a dime to these young kids out here today, man. It's not worth a dime. I mean, you, you just up and kill somebody. It, it's sad. Hey, it, It's really sad.